In this question, we're going to look at a classic exam style question regarding momentum. Pause the question now and try all parts of this question. So part A is an absolute classic, uh, but it is quite tricky and it's very easy to make a mistake. So what we should do is just do a very quick sketch of the situation uh, and this will help us understand what's going on. So we've got a bullet heading towards a wooden block. It's going to strike the wooden block. It's going to get embedded in the wooden block. That's going to cause the wooden block to move. And then the wooden block ends up higher up later on. And then it tells us in the question that the change in height of the center of mass of the block is 0.81 meters. And it tells us to determine the speed of the pellet, importantly, the pellet when it strikes the wooden block. So the first thing that probably comes to mind is that the energy gained by the block equals the uh, gravitational potential energy of the block. And where has that come from? That equals the energy uh, lost by the bullet. So let's um, calculate this. So MGH is the energy gained, and that's going to be equal to the block's initial kinetic energy, which is half mb squared. So the height of the block is going to be half v squared divided by g, because obviously the m's cancel, and we're looking uh, at the block at this uh, point. So that's going to be half. Uh, uh, so we don't want height, do we? We want velocity. So this is, I should have rearranged it this way. So uh, velocity is 2gh all square rooted, right? This is for the block. So uh, velocity of the block is a square root of 2 times 9.8 times uh, 0.81 meters. So let's just put that in our calculator. Uh, so this means the block had a kinetic energy of 3.98 joules initially. Now you might say, why have I done this equation with the mass of the block when I've said that it's actually equal to the energy lost by the bullet? Well, this isn't actually strictly 100% true, okay? And if I equate this energy to the energy of the bullet and rearrange for the velocity, I'm not going to get the correct answer. And the reason it's not entirely true is because the collision might not be entirely elastic which means that the kinetic energy might not all be conserved, in which case, uh, even though the, the bullet is losing energy, it doesn't necessarily make it move. So, you know, you can imagine a bullet firing against a wall, uh, that bullet is just going to get stopped entirely by the wall and all of that kinetic energy is, is, is effectively going to be lost or transferred away. And that's not going to really tell us anything useful. So what we need to look at is something that is always conserved. And what do we know is always conserved? momentum. is So we're going to tackle the second part of the problem using momentum conservation. So the momentum lost by the bullet equals the momentum gained by the block. So what momentum is lost by the bullet? Well, it's going to be the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet. And the momentum gained by the block is the mass of the block, which is three, uh, 0.35 kilograms times by the velocity of the block, uh, which is this. I don't know. Obviously, that's a very silly mistake because this is velocity of the block. So this is an example of where, you know, if you, if you show you're working clearly, it's easy to spot your mistakes. So times by 3.98 meters per second. So the momentum gained by the block 
is 1.39. We're going to divide that by the mass of the bullet, 0.012 kilograms. And we're going to find that the velocity of the bullet is 116 meters per second. So just to recap the steps, we find out the energy gained by the block, the, the gravitational potential energy, that's equal to the initial kinetic energy of the block. So we work out the initial velocity of the block by equating half mv squared mgh. We then say, what is always conserved? Well, energy might not be conserved, so we can't strictly say this is true. But we can say that the momentum gained by the block will be equal to the momentum lost by the bullet. And uh, we can use that to work out the velocity. Part B, the wooden block is replaced by a steel block of the same mass. The experiment is repeated with a steel block and an identical pellet. The pellet rebounds after striking the block. So the bullet comes in and rebounds out. So remember that force is mv minus mu over t, so change in momentum over time. So we've got a much greater change in momentum, or delta p, which means we've got a greater force from the block on the bullet because we've had to stop it and turn it around and make it go backwards. So there is a greater force and a greater change in momentum Obviously, the masses are constant, so what must have changed? The change in velocity must be greater. So we can say greater change of momentum, greater force, because F equals mv minus mu over t, therefore a greater change in velocity and obviously the masses remain constants. Now have we answered the question? No we haven't because it says compare with the height. So the metal block reaches a greater Height. It's really easy to do all the, the hard bits and then just forget to answer the actual question that's being asked. It's always worth reading through your answer, double checking the question. Okay, part C. Which experiment is likely to give them more accurate value for the velocity of the pellet? So what have we done in part B? So the steel one, we've actually assumed uh, an elastic collision. We've assumed kinetic energy is conserved because uh, we're kind of assuming that the um, rebound velocity is the same as the initial velocity, but we don't know if that's true. Have we done that with the first method? Well, initially we started doing that and then I said, well, actually, we don't know if that's true. And, and we, we changed it and we looked at what is conserved momentum. So in part A, we actually haven't uh, assumed anything. So therefore, uh, the first method doesn't assume this and gives a more accurate value. So why is energy lost? Well, it could be that uh, the bullet gets deformed a little bit or some of the kinetic energy gets transferred into a thermal store of the, of the steel block, and that's why kinetic energy isn't conserved. Now, one final question for you. Can you spot the, the slight mistake I've made in this question here? Well, hopefully you realised that I didn't actually do this calculation properly. So... Uh, what I should have said is the momentum of the bullet times by the velocity, so the mass of the bullet times by the velocity of the bullet is equal to the momentum of the final object, which is obviously the total mass of both of these things, the momentum of the bullet plus the, 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 so the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block times by the velocity, 
of the combined uh, objects. So actually, what would this be? This would be 0 0.012 plus 0 0.350 times by 3.98. And that's going to be equal to, uh, or if we divide that by the mass of the bullet, that will be equal to the velocity of the bullet. So now we can actually get the correct answer. Uh, which should be uh, 120 meters per second. So this one actually is not correct.